sexual energy. Most of us know that sexual energy is the juice of the universe. This is where everything comes into life. It's the most powerful life-creating energy. And it's not just life-creating. Scientists, artists, actors, what have you, performers, dancers, they all know that sexual energy is directly related to the creative act. Whenever you are full of that plum, whenever you are full of that energy, your creative juices are literally flowing. And whenever you are depleted of that energy, you feel that your creativity is at low, or it might take very awkward forms of expression. History is full of examples, but we're going to talk about it from the point of view of spiritual practice, the necessity of conserving that energy and understanding the way that energy functions in the human body. Now, in yoga there is this word known as brahmacharya, which literally consists of two words, brahma and acharya. Brahma is the you know, supreme absolute and acharya is the teacher, so it's like literally that word is often translated as a student because it's someone who is partaking in the study of Brahman or his own consciousness. So, in other words, Brahmacharya is a student of the science of consciousness, as simple as that. And that word is variously translated and interpreted as abstinence from, from uh, sexual activity. That word is often associated with the withholding one's desires to express oneself sexually. Let's look at, look, look at it from a proper um, angle. Let's look at it from the true meaning of that word. Perhaps some of you want to just like, okay, all right, all right, kids are at home, no worries. <laughs> and the birds, you know, this is, you know, this is uh, like jungles. There's many, many beautiful birds here. Some of them like to scream. Just maybe some of you just hand, stand and just like, you know, they will go. So the brahmacharya, if understood properly, means not the actual celibacy, strictly speaking. It is redirection of one's energy towards evolutionary flow. What does it mean? All sexual energy is usually goes down. This is where the, the outflow of sexual energy, this is where the openness of the sexual energies are. Usually the sexual energy culminates in the act of discharge of semen for men or the discharge of the female fluid for women, which is else, or else known as an orgasm. That process of um, physical ecstasy is the, perhaps the closest closest analogy to the rapture of bliss, but one can never compare them because they are very different facets, or they are very different facets, facets of experience uh, at the different poles of the same reality. The sexual energy literally flows downwards, it flows outside into the domain of sexual and sensual enjoyment. And the brahmacharya, it's something completely opposite. It's when that very energy is redirected upwards. So the brahmacharya proper is not the abstinence from sexual activity. Even. It's not celibacy as such. It's the ability to redirect one's sexual energy in the 
upward motion, in the upward movement. In the progressive stages of awakening, meditators and yogis alike, you know, or take any other traditions, shamanic traditions, Sufi tradition, you know, Zen, Tao, these practices have been described in great detail. It is when this very raw, as it were, uncooked yet, sexual energy is being moved up the main channel, up the main channel, as a cerebrospinal fluid. And that cerebrospinal fluid is the, you know, that's the gasoline of this whole spiritual process, you know. That's what fuels this whole process. So if you don't have that, enough of that energy, your vehicle is not going to be taken anywhere. It's going to take you as, you know, as long as, let's say, end of this road, but no further if you don't have enough of that energy. That energy is paramount, primordial, because that energy, it's a manifestation of the creative energy which lays at the basis of universal creation on the physiological level. In Ayurveda, this energy is known as Ojas. Ojas is the final product of all digestion. When all these digestive processes took place, which like usually takes 28 lunar calendar days and nights, the food that you've ate becomes your ojas. And not just the food, but all the impressions. And that ojas is the final process of digestion and also the immunological substance that keeps you healthy, that keeps you active, that keeps you creative, that keeps you alive. Very much so. So this is as far as the celibacy goes. So if one can achieve the conditions whereby one is not discharging that energy through the sensory enjoyment, when one can conserve that energy by whatever means, it's a different subject altogether, we're not going to go into it now. <laughs> you can find out, you know, like, uh, there are many different ways of how to do it. Then, sexual enjoyment can be actually part of your spiritual practice. But that has to be understood. You, would have, you have to understand you have to understand how to deal with that energy, how to transform that energy. Because let's face it, we are all humans, we all live in this body, and that body has a strong sway over our emotions, over our feelings, over our mental processes. It's inseparable. You cannot even separate, you cannot even begin to separate where is my body and where is my mind. Where, you know, Because it's all one pulsating, reality, you know, one pulsating beautiful reality, electrically charged, you know, through the processes in the brain, but otherwise all this flesh, blood is very much connected to everything that what we call human. So Brahmacharya is the one whose teacher is Brahman, the, ones, the one whose teacher is consciousness. And consciousness is not separate from the physiology. Our flesh is consciousness incarnate. Our flesh is consciousness incarnate through the primordial vibrations. It's the eternal mysteries of the Christian um, civilization, the world becomes flesh. So there is deep connection, you know, because that sexual energy that runs in the cerebral, like as a, as a cerebrospinal fluid, 
that energy fuels this whole process of transformation and metamorphosis. And at the same time, it allows, allows the human being with, to withstand higher states of consciousness. If you don't have enough ojas, if you don't have enough of that substance in you, then when the high states of consciousness arrive, right, when they manifest within, because they don't arrive from the outside, when they manifest within, they are so powerful that they are capable of burning the entire network of nerve channels and the nervous system itself is under such a tremendous stress. So this ojas literally oils this process. It's a, it's a substance that allows the consciousness, consciousness to be experienced in the physical body. So the physical body, physical body can withstand the higher states of consciousness. So that's the real meaning of Brahmacharya. That's the real meaning of celibacy or the aim of celibacy. It's not that, uh, you know, like some say that uh, unless you're celibate, <coughs> your spiritual pro progress is not going to take you, you know, it's not going to happen. No. It works here in a twofold ways. At the early stages, <coughs> that redirection of the flow of energy allows the realignment of the prana, because ojas is connected intimately with prana in the, in the body and in other substance, which is a subtle essence of fire, tejas. But it's a completely different subject altogether. So this process at the early stages is very important because that conserved sexual energy can be used as a very powerful force in your own process of awakening. And at the later stages, when the awakening took place and the high states of consciousness are being revealed, that sexual energy is then paramount for the physiology not to crumble down, for the nervous system to stay intact and vibrate with this high state, states of energy. That's as far as we understand this.